Welcome. Welcome to Trauma Research Foundation's TRF Tuesday. This is our weekly mini workshop series from Bright Voices in Therapeutic Embodiment. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. It tells YouTube that this content is valuable, and then they'll show it to more people. And I'm really happy to bring to you Embodied Narrating, Playback Theater for Social Change. It's my pleasure to introduce to you our fabulous facilitator, Melissa Nussbaum. Melissa is a full-time theater maker, abolitionist, and activist. In 2017, she founded Red Sage Stories, Playback Theater and Art for Social Change, a BIPOC community-based theater in Roxbury, Massachusetts. Take it away, Melissa. Thank you, Mary. I am so glad to be here with you all today. Uh, you are so welcome to be here, and I'm really happy to be sharing Playback Theater with you, with my colleagues from Red Sage Stories. I uh, am really happy to introduce to you Andrea. Hello, Andrea, everyone. You... <laughs> um, hello from Mexico. Um, uh, really, Playback Theater and deep listening changed completely my life. And I, I will invite you to have more uh, uh, experiences with playback outside this space. <laughs> Sonia, would you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sonia. I am in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and I've been with Playback Theater since 2018. And it is the one thing that was constant through the pandemic. So it was very nice to be able to still perform and still touch people. Thank you. Well, whether it was your it's your first time or your fourth time, you are so welcome to be here. Playback theater is really about forming community and having people feel included. And whether you get to tell your story today or not, you probably will hear something in somebody else's story that touches you. And that is a big theme in playback theater. So we would like to just review that in the other sessions, we saw different forms. We call the way that we perform a story, the way that we enact your story is called a form. And we have short forms first, which are pairs when there's two contrasting emotions. There's fluid sculptures, which is when uh, four or three or four or five actors play one teller story. And then there's a three-part story where somebody tells a short story with a beginning, middle, and end, and we play it out in three parts. Today, we're going to move into what we call long forms, and we call this long form scenes very cleverly because we have short little scenes that make up a bigger story. So you'll see us move back and move forward. Um, or we might move off scene, off, off stage to be completely off. Um, and this is uh, when you see this live, when this is performed in a live show, the conductor, who that's the role that I play where I'm inviting stories and leading, I'm conducting the show, um, would invite somebody from the audience to come up and sit next to me. And I would ask, I would do the interview very intimately. And today we're going to invite somebody uh, to come up and tell their story, to tell a story that you feel comfortable sharing with this audience. And you will be promoted to being panelists so that we can see you and we can speak together. And I'll ask you a few questions. And usually we have um, a music table that would accompany us. So we don't have all the accoutrements uh, that we normally have, but we uh, do have the most important thing, which is which are the actors. And 
what we try to do when we tell your story, when we enact your story, is not necessarily to be literal, because you know your story. We've heard it. We'll hear the words. But we want to get to the essence, to the heart of your story. And we'll check in with you about whether we got to that or not, because you will have the last say in that. So if we have a somebody here has volunteered, Mary, would you like to share a story? Sure. Uh, so it's it just is a true and personal story. Uh, hey, you are um, a true and personal story. Um, uh, I had some work done in my house uh, recently, and there was a painter here for quite a while, for like five or six weeks. And he did painting and he did lots of other things. And he finished the work a few weeks ago, but he was back again yesterday to do something. And when we saw each other, we were so happy to see each other. And he reached out and gave me, opened his arms and gave me a big hug. And it was such a nice, friendly feeling and it was unexpected, but he, we had been together because I work from home, you know, and he was here for weeks at a time. We'd been together a lot. And so I didn't realize that we had really grown to have some affection for each other. Nice. Mary, could you pick somebody to play you? Um, Melissa. Okay. And would you give me, give us two words about how describing how you feel in this story? Surprised and touched. Surprised and touched. Lovely. And what's the name of your worker? George. George. Okay. So we're going to see um, Mary's story, getting work done, brought a surprise. Let's watch. Um, oh, I have so much work that I want done in my house. I... <laughs> And I have to work at the same time. I mean, I, you know, sometimes like I, I, I'll keep an eye on on this fellow. But I mean, I he came oh. recommended, but I don't know him. Um, okay, well, you know, I I have to do my work, so um, I, I'm just gonna. Oh, George. Oh. Well, Hello, well, I can help. I can be here. Oh, okay. Continue working. I, I will just be here. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just going to have to concentrate over here. Um, you know, TRF has a lot. There's a lot to do. I have to, I'm like juggling so many things all the time. Um, you know, I, I just, um, oh. Oh, yeah, I, I will continue here. I will continue. Okay. <laughs> going to be painted. I, I, I'm waiting to be painted. Oh, Oh, I feel that's such a pretty color on me. Oh, thank you. oh I look good. Thank turn, you. Turn around. Turn around a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's okay. George. Ah, see, see. Oh, I feel so beautiful. George, George, hey, would you like a glass of water? Oh, I mean, yes. Yes, you it, need? it will be nice. Okay, I'll, 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 yeah. Um, I'm. I'll be right. I'll get you some water. Um, George. Oh, water. Here I am. I, I am here to quench your thirst. That's what I do. I quench thirst. Thank you. Oh, I, did, did you bring your lunch? Do you need your lunch heated in the micro? Oh, I mean, that will be so nice, Miss Mary. I, I'm happy to do that. I'm happy. You know, why don't you just take a little break? And just like, you know, the toxins from the paint and everything, you know, just like get a break from it. I'm going to show you this mix. Look, look at it. Look at it. <gasps> oh, I love that color. Oh, my God. Oh, you're really good at this. Oh, okay. Uh, I do have to get back. I have a four o'clock. I have to, I have to get busy. Um, I'm but, finished here. So don't worry. I'm finished. George.
I'm going to miss you. I will be back. Bye. I told you I will be back. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Miss Mary, I, I really miss you, Miss Mary. <laughs> no, I'm so glad you're back. I have a new friend. See you next time, I mean. <laughs> Thank you, actors. Thank you, actors. So, you know, yeah, I saw my story there. Of course, it didn't happen quite like that, but I really see now how playback theater helps you to kind of see different perspectives or see a situation from different angles. Uh, so I did see my story and I did see the feeling um, behind behind myself, behind George, um, sort of that uh, enjoyment of, of each other and kind of working separately side by side, you know, inside the house and touching base for lunch or for drinks or for a break or to give direction. Yeah, I definitely saw my story there. And hey. strangely, and this is something that I think is so interesting is it it's, feels very moving to me, even though there's it's not particularly touching. Well, maybe it is, but it's moving to me and it brings, it makes me uh, tear up a little and it made me laugh. And it does feel very touching to watch my story being played out. Yeah. I wonder if there's anybody in the audience who also resonated with that story. Would you like to put a yes in it? And Jennifer asks, why is it so touching? Mimi said that was very moving and deepening of experience. Yes. Well, um, why, why is it? So I guess I'm asking really, you that. Why is I it so touching? It. It's a great question. It is so touching because we get to see that our lives are worthy of art. Our lives are, wor are the story of our life is a worthy story. No matter how simple, ordinary, and sometimes, of course, the um, more difficult and deeper stories um, have bring even more catharsis and more and more meaning. But it's absolutely love that. Yes, Catherine says um, we when we see that our simple story can be played out with respect and dignity, we. That, that feeling in ourselves of respect and dignity is enhanced and our resiliency is increased. So when we feel that, we feel touched. We feel touched. Yeah. And it becomes like, how did that happen? That was just a simple story, you know? But yeah. it was because we, as protagonists of the story, receive so much when we get to see our story done. And in playback theater... Uh, we hold the storyteller with the highest regard. So we're not trying to get laughs, although it's wonderful that people laugh and that there are things that are very, because we, we love to laugh and that gives us joy and that also increases our resiliency, but um, we're not going after the laugh. We're going after the essence of the story. And that yeah. makes it touching. And I, can I say something? There's another comment from Jennifer. I love Sonia playing the inanimate objects because they are part of it too. So that's that's what we can also do in playback theater. Feelings, objects, um, the earth, the universe, everything can be enacted and they can talk and you can uh, have a dialogue with them also. So that's, uh, that's another part. You, we kind of elevate the experience not just from a literary or a narrative way, but with an enactment. Ah, thank that you. makes a lot of sense. So we're winding down. If anyone has another question or comment, please get it into the chat soon. We've just got a minute or two left. And, you know, I like to ask the question, what's the, what's the takeaway from today? 
Resi- I hear resilience. I hear perspective. Um, I hear essence, getting to the essence. I hear that our lives are worthy of, of art, of our stories are worthy of being told. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? Yes, I'm assuming that other people in the audience saw something of their own lives or stories. Mm-hmm. Some other moment where maybe they connected with a stranger that became a friend or a worker in their house that they reached out to or some somebody or the joy that they felt with their children, that moment of just such deep love um, and and a moment in time when you uh, receive a, a, a gift from a child that was unexpected. When you see that in somebody else's story, we form community. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think we... We came together in community today. Mm. Jennifer asks a good question. What's the feedback after you do this with someone who's experienced trauma? Um, When someone experiences serious trauma, first of all, we never reenact harm. So um, a person is able to see their experience without feeling um, harmed again. And when you're able to see it as it's like a a moving picture, it's in front of you, but you get to have the experience that you lived through that. You are here now. You have that resiliency. You survived that. And you get to see um, what maybe you couldn't see in another moment. And it becomes further absorbed. into your past, into your being, and it's, it becomes less of uh, an obstacle or less of something that is, you know, not letting you be in connection, in relationship, or less alive. So a lot of times people feel more aliveness after they've had that experience of seeing a traumatic story played out. So if you don't mind my asking, could you give an example of how you play out a traumatic story without really going into the harm? Let's say I was in a bicycle accident and I really hurt myself. How would, how how would it work? Um, Well, I wouldn't necessarily show you falling down and getting hurt, Mm -hmm. but maybe, um, uh, one of the other actors who comes into a scene is who's not playing you uh, is called a ninja actor. They're, they step in to play different roles. Um, and so the ninja actor might be, might be the arm, like Sonia is, is such a great um, uh, actor for inanimate objects. And sh- she might choose to play the arm and say, oh, that hurt, but uh, I'm starting to get better. Um, or woo, that experience in the you know ER, or um, or you might be the person who found you and um, explaining what happened, or the person who's caring for you now. There's so many possibilities. Um, would you want to say anything, Andrea or Sonia, about that? Um, focusing a lot on the healing part of it, you address the fact that there was an injury, but focusing on the healing part or what's happening afterwards, you know, might be if you're on a bicycle accident, I, I probably would go for being the bicycle. <laughs> oh, wow. I wish somebody would fix me. <laughs> Maybe I can play someone who's watching from a uh, long distance, the, the, the accident and someone is saying, Ooh, wow, what a, something like that, because we already heard the story and we already maybe heard some of the details that the teller uh, share or not, but we, we will keep that because that's not the main essence of the story. Either wise that like, um, it was like the conflict kind of, but there's some resolution, something else happens. So that's why we move on and we do not get stuck into the problem, into the accident, into the injury. So there's a, like 
And it depends on the, on the people who's acting and on the moment. You know, Sonia gave me a very good uh, thing with the, with the wall, so I use her. So it depends. We have to be uh, in a dialogue between the actors so we can catch how we can build and move forward because that's what we also want to move, do. Move through the story. Do not get stuck in some just one scene and get into, you know, that's part of the, of the training also in, in doing playback theater. Excellent. Wonderful. Anything else you'd like to say to wrap up? Did we cover a lot? Um, so Jennifer asked if, uh, if the, uh, it was so impromptu and full of improv. Do you work together beforehand? Yes, we train, we rehearse, we do lots of um, playing out stories and figuring out how to jump in here and how to respond. And just, I think um, Andrea really answered that question beautifully just now. Yeah. And Lila asks a great question real quickly. How do people get into this more? Yay. So um, I believe that there are a bunch of links and maybe they could be put up again in the chat. Um, you can check into uh, the International Playback Theater uh, Network. There's some upcoming um, festivals that you can get to see online or in person. Um, there's one that, um, and there's also, please go to our Facebook page, uh, Red Sage Stories. Um, so there's lots of ways and there's classes, um, workshops. Yes, come and get trained. We'd love to have you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Melissa, Andrea, and Sonia for being with us, playing out Lila's story and my story and exposing us to playback theater and how it can really build resiliency and help us see new perspectives. And such a big thank you to Lila for being a brave volunteer and sharing her touching story with us. Thanks to our audience for joining us. We've got one more episode next week at the same time. We hope you're enjoying getting a little taste of playback theater. Please share this program with everyone you know. Be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.